Hello Friends leaves things into the last possible second and then wonders why he does a terrible job here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on the three best heroes to farm MMR with in the current patch of Dota 2. Number 1, Death Prophet, particularly in the offlane role. Why is DP OP? Well, putting aside the actual buffs to the hero for a minute, one of the nicest features of this hero is that she destroys basically all of the popular carries in lane. Ursa, Monkey King, Troll, Slark, each one of these carries completely dumpsters some set of regular melee offlaners. But not Death Prophet. She does fine against virtually any of the current strong carries. The carries that would normally be good against Death Prophet in the offlane would be kill carries to punish her squishiness. But quite frankly, these kill type heroes and these kill type lanes just aren't being picked right now because they aren't good. So, Death Prophet is essentially guaranteed a lane win in a patch where laning can very easily determine the outcome of the entire game. As for the buffs to this hero, there have fairly recently been a ton of little changes that do make the difference, such as reduced cast point on Crypt Swarm, increased turn rate, and exorcism move speed and talent buffs. But, by far the biggest buff to Death Prophet is that her move speed was increased from 310 to 335. She is currently the single fastest hero in the game, with no other heroes having more than 330 move speed, five less than Death Prophet. This makes her a monumental pain in the ass to try to kill during laning, in teamfights, and while split pushing. How do you play Death Prophet? 1. Pick Death Prophet as an offlaner, mid, or 5 position, but ideally as an offlaner. 2. Start with Tango, Salve, Fluffy Hat, and a bunch of branches. 3. Punch enemies relentlessly from a super long distance in the lane, and use your nuke for every ranged creep. 4. If the enemies step too far up in the lane, press Siphon on them until they run into their tower. 5. Level Q and E equally. Finally, going for a point in W when you feel like you actually have enough damage to kill somebody in the silence. 6. Build Bottle into Falcon Blade. If you want to go fight with your team, then get a hood. If you want to play the map and farm, then build Boots of Travel. 7. With every Exorcism cooldown, run at a tower. If your lane sucks, then run at the mid tower. If you owned your lane, then run at the enemy's safe lane tower. If the enemy's 5-man defended tower, Accept the fact that they're wasting their time and walk away. 8. At some point, exorcisming towers will cause you to feed. This is when you exorcism Roshan instead. 9. Build BKB, Shiva's, Heart, and Refresher Orb. Lotus Orb and Yules are also great items if the enemy team has a lot of single target disable or kiteable heroes slash silences respectively. 10. Eventually, they can't fight you because Death Prophet late game is just complete bullshit. Siege with every Exo, and you will eventually win. Number 2. Enigma. Why is Enigma OP? Honestly, it's mainly because he's just great at every single point in the game, then insanely OP in the late game. In the late game, Refresher Ag's Black Hole deals damage equal to 112% of a hero caught in the Black Hole's HP as a mix of magic and pure damage, plus 1600 pure damage if you somehow survive the percentage damage while lasting 8 seconds and pulling units into the center. In other words, Enigma may actually be the single greatest late game hero in Dota, at least in terms of potential. And you know what? I'm actually okay with that. His ultimate is literally a black hole. It should be devastating. However, the current problem with Enigma is that he's good at every other stage of the game as well, not just the late game. His laning is extremely strong because Eidolons let you deny every single ranged creep. His farming is extremely fast because Eidolons plus Necrobook is like having a Hand of Midas on crack that also kills people. One of the biggest strengths of this hero, however, was Valve giving him a talent that buffs up Malefice and a talent that buffs up Midnight Pulse. The Malefice Stun Duration talent lets you get kills and fight without Black Hole and kill people with your Necro units, and the Midnight Pulse Radius talent lets you defend towers and Roshan without having Black Hole available. So, that classic counter of just playing around the cooldown of Black Hole doesn't really work out so well anymore. This hero is so good that Enigma is an S-tier hero in both the 5 and 3 position. 
despite being played quite differently in both. As a 5, you leave Eidolons at level 1 and play around your Q and E being maxed out, rushing Blink Dagger as soon as possible so that you can essentially just solo black hole their carry. And as a 3, you max Eidolons, pick up a Necro, and play somewhat similar to a Beastmaster, running your zoo at towers and looking to hit big black holes in teamfights with BKB, Octarine, and Refresher Orb. How do you play Enigma? 1. Pick Enigma as a 3 or a 5, or possibly even as a 4 if you are stuck playing that role and you want to play Enigma. 2. If you are a 3, then start with 3 Sages Masks and a Clarity. If you're a 5, then get whatever regen you need to heal your carry, and fill the rest of your slots with Sages Masks. 3. Stand at your tier 3 for Bounty Rune Spawn, letting your team know that you won't be fighting the bounties. 4. Deny a melee creep as soon as the creep wave spawns, and then hard body block the range creep and deny that thing once your Eidolons are off cooldown again. If all goes well, you should deny two creeps on the very first wave. 5. On every creep wave, step back behind your tower and deny a ranged creep. 6. If the enemy team can kill your Eidolons, or your A5, then use them to stack and block camps. Otherwise, use them to last hit and harass. 7. If you're A5, rush mana boots into blink, and hold the enemy cores whenever they show on the map. If you're A3, rush a necro book and barrel down lanes for tier 1s with black hole. 8. After your first item, whether you are a 5 or 3 position, your items are generally the same. You want a BKB or Lincolns if those let you black hole a little bit easier, then built into Octarine Core, Refresher, and Egg Scepter. Egg Shard is a really nice item if you want your holes to be a bit more disruptive in teamfights, especially if you are up against a lot of melee heroes. 9. At some point, you will hold the enemy carry. They'll die from full HP without buyback, and then you'll win the game. Number 3. Alchemist. Why is Alchemist so OP? Because the couple of builds that people are going on this hero are borderline unbeatable if Alk can hit a remotely decent timing. The first build is Battle Fury into Sanjinyasha, AC, BKB, Swift Blink, and Abyssal Blade. The two items that make this build incredibly OP is honestly the Sanjinyasha and the Swift Blink. SMY is just an incredibly desirable core item right now because it's one of the only items in the game that gives a good chunk of status resistance, which is Dota's most ubiquitously hated stat for good reason. Swift Blink on any hero that has a good BAT to benefit from both the damage and attack speed, as well as good movement speed, is THE late game carry item right now in Dota 2, for two reasons. One. This thing basically gives you a Lycan ult in terms of damage buff and mobility, which of course is going to be broken on any carry. 2. Honestly, prior to 7.28, carries would have loved to have built blink daggers in the late game already, because the main way to beat carries is to kite them. Unfortunately, they've just never had the slot to put a measly 2000 gold item in when there are 6000 gold items in the game and they're the carry. So now, with upgraded blinks, they're simply mandatory on any late game carry build. With this build, Alk is very difficult to out carry. And if it looks like he's about to lose the carry battle, he just needs to take a few moments to farm and get a rapier and then he wins the carry battle again. The second build is roughly the same, except you go for a heart and usually an ag shard instead of BKB. This build abuses the fact that this new heart item is so powerful that if you buy it in a winning game, it becomes virtually impossible for the enemy team to kill you. In other words, if the game is normal, then go the first build, which is the damage build. If you have a lead, then go the second build, which is the tank build, and you won't throw because you are unkillable. How do you play Alk? 1. Pick Alk as a 1 or a 3. But keep in mind, 3 is very different, you will just be farming your team Ag Scepters, and it's nowhere near as good as carry Alk. 2. Start with Acid Spray most of the time, and push out the very first creep wave rushing to level 2 and abusing the fact that this ability is just impossible to stand in. 3. Hit creeps and play entirely for last hits. This hero does not care even remotely about kills, only good trades and last hits. 4. Rush a battle fury and head to the jungle as soon as your lane looks a little bit dangerous. Punch creeps and stack 2 camps with acid spray and your body every time you have the opportunity. 5. Beg your team to stack the ancients. 6. Hit creeps until you have Sanjinyasha plus Battle Fury and a couple of points in stun. Then you can tentatively look to contribute to fights, but still prefer farming. 7. 
If the enemy team has a shitload of stuns and magic damage, get a BKB, then fight. If there are squishy supports to jump, get a blink, then fight. If you're owning and just want to be immortal, then get AC, heart, then fight. 8. After every item timing from now on, try running at the enemies and seeing how the fight goes. If you win, take objectives. If you lose, then farm the next item and try again. 9. Rinse and repeat until you're winning. If you're still losing, then get a rapier and either feed the rapier and lose or win with the rapier. Anyway, that's it for this video. I do want to say at the end here, I know I said in my previous video that I was going to do tips at the end. This was something that people called out correctly. This was imposed by the Flanagans. That was not by my choice. They wanted me to stop talking about them. They wanted me to stop besmirching them, but I will not go down without a fight. So honestly, if I have one tip, it is that, guys, pizza crusts, especially from the local dumpster, they are not worth getting in fight with hobo gangs over. It's not worth it. It's been a year of torment. It's been torment and it's been tough. If you guys want to fight with me, make sure to please like, comment, and subscribe. We've got to build up the army. The Flanagans, I'm going to war. Uh, I really appreciate you guys checking this out until the very end. And I hope to see you in another video.